everybody. Welcome back to Cooperative Gardening with Molly and Kate. It's been a really long time and I've missed you. I'm Molly Brown, 4-H Youth Educator with Cornell Cooperative Extension. And man, have I missed you. It's been a long time. I had all these plans. I had so much to teach you. I had so much to garden. And then it snowed in May for Mother's Day. <sighs> but that's okay. Sun's out means the green thumbs out. And it's a good weekend. Soon, I mean two days from now, but it's Memorial Day weekend. You know what that means? Soil temperatures are most likely upwards of 50 degrees and plus. Molly, what does that mean? It means it's time to put your veggies in the ground. Yes! All this time, all this time. We started our seeds back in March. And now the fruits of our labor of tending to the seeds and caring for them and watching them grow, it's time to put it all to fruition. So we'll talk about that next week. I'm getting way ahead of myself. This week, we're talking tomatoes. I have a funny story. So after the last video I did, I got a phone call from my buddy Jim, Master Gardener. He could be your buddy too. All the Master Gardeners can at ChautauquaMG at Cornell.edu and he gave me a call. He's like, Molly, your video was really good. I think we have some problems though. What kind of tomato seed starts did you start? I was like, well, Jim, I started tomatoes. He's like, yeah, but what kind? It's like, I didn't know there was different kinds of tomatoes. I mean, obviously there's cherry and beefsteak and Rutger, stuff like that. He's like, no, but what kind? Are they determinate or indeterminate? Well, I don't know. I don't know. Let's check it out. Indeterminate. Those sneaky little cherry tomatoes. That's right, indeterminate. Well, Molly, what does that mean? I'm gonna tell you. So, determinant tomatoes, they end up, they stop growing, right? They are your tomatoes that you're gonna put in your cages. Indeterminate tomatoes don't stop growing. What? That's right, they'll just grow forever and ever and ever until the end of the season. So if you do have indeterminate tomatoes, which I do, you're gonna need a different setup. And then you're gonna to have to learn how to prune them, but don't worry, I got you, I got you, I'll take care of you. We'll get to that when they're in the ground and we need to learn how to prune, but they're gonna grow up a big fence, a climbing post. I just set up homesteading tomato rack right here. That's right, we're gonna grow our indeterminate cherry tomatoes right up this rack. Our beefsteak Rutger tomatoes are gonna go right in here. And we're doing that this weekend because the soil temperature is warmer than 50 degrees. Hooray, this is great, great news. So that's what I have to tell you about the tomatoes. Very exciting. Now, Molly, it's been a month since we've seen you. What else do you have going on? Let me show you. Look at these potatoes. Look at them. We had a little bit of a snafu and mother nature decided to freeze, but these guys over here kept it together. We lost a few of them over there, but I'm really willing to bet they're gonna pull back through. I am. So look at those beautiful potatoes. Beautiful. Everyone, when we're lifted from quarantines, coming over to my house for potato salad. That's right. So what we're gonna do this weekend is we're gonna get some more dirt and we're gonna cover the stems of the potatoes, leave the leaves to the sun so they can absorb the nutrients from the sun, cover up the stems and let them keep growing and growing and growing. Our bucket potatoes are killing it also. Super awesome. Onions, now that's a beautiful sight over there. I'm really, really, really pumped about the onions. That freeze had no effect on the onions at all. They said, I don't care what you're doing, freeze. I'm gonna grow up and be beautiful. So they sure are, look at those guys. Over here, we have some spectacular looking peas. That's right, beautiful. As soon as they get a little bit higher, we're gonna tie some string across the stick so they have something to grab onto and climb up. Behind them, we have peas 
and then we have yellow beans, wax beans behind those. All looking phenomenal. The other thing I have got that I got going on in the soil is some marigolds. This is really fun and I'm pretty excited about it. Marigolds, which is also companion gardening that I will teach you about next week uh, in what you can plant together to help with other things. But I'm not gonna get ahead of myself. No, I'm not. We've got the marigolds and they actually detract bugs and pests from your veggies. Uh, they're taking one for the team and that's a beautiful thing. I have some hanging tomatoes up on the deck. Super fun, they plant them upside down, they grow upwards, the kids think you have magic. They get to nibble on cherry tomatoes off the deck all day long. Got an herb garden going up there that's looking fabulous. I planted the marigolds in between the basil. I'll have pictures of all of that in the comments at the bottom of this video. And I think that's it, except for it's National Invasive Species Awareness Week. Yes! It's a topic near and dear to my heart. I um, am become very passionate about invasive species, and this is a week learning all about invasive species. There's small things you can do to help stop the spread of invasive species, and one of them is to know what you're planting. When you go to your garden center, just because a flower is beautiful doesn't necessarily mean it belongs in your garden or even in the state of New York, because invasive species are not natural to New York, and they end up taking over they have no natural predators and they can come across and devastate entire um, gardens or areas. Did you know burning bush is an invasive species? That's right, got two on the property. Also yellow daylily, got them everywhere on this property. They just take over, they kill out everything natural that grows or native that grows and it's really a problem. Your master gardeners at ChautauquaMG at cornell.edu can also help you making sure that you're not planting invasive species in your garden. That's all I've got for you. We'll see you next week, companion gardening, and we're gonna talk fertilizer. Yes, never a dull moment with cooperative gardening. Thanks for joining me, we'll see you next time, bye.